Yeah. Stay alert. Good and evil are fighting, so know your worth. Hello and welcome to Take Note TV. I'm Emerald and this wonderful man sitting to my left is the fantastic Inja. Hello Inja, how are you? Uh, hello Emerald, I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Good. Before we delve into it, we need to draw some attention. Well, the attention's already there. This bright yellow jumper right here with this fantastic slogan on it. Tell me all about the jumper. Well, first of all, we've got to just locate the fact that Yellow goes really well with pink and like man is just styling it <laughs> wonderfully here with the aesthetics of this building. Thank you very much. Um, but no, the actual, um, to the jumper, um, we all want to dance, don't we? Like we've all been cooped up, we want to dance. Um, I made a song a couple of years ago on my first album with Hospital Records called She Just Want to Dance and um, it just came that through the pandemic, it's like, what do we all want to do? So I had to switch it up for everybody. We just want to dance. So she just want to dance became we just want to dance, became hashtag let us dance and yeah. became a fantastic jump on. Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about MC culture. What traditionally has the role always been? What does being an MC add to a dance? Well, first of all, for those that don't know, an MC is a microphone controller. So you are the person that controls the microphone. And in, in my opinion, what it, what it brings to a dance um, is we are the voice between the people and the selectors playing music, or the selectors and the people. We are the middleman, we are the bridge, we are, we are the ones that put um, words to the emotions and feelings of music, we put words to the emotions and feelings of the audience, we act on behalf of both. So we are the middlemen, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You're the communicator, the translator. Yeah. And where did the concept of MC come from originally and how has it changed and progressed over time? Oof, well, originally, um, you know, you're gonna, you've got to go back to people like you, Roy, and you've got to go back to some real um, early reggae dance or microphone toasters, but in modern day, dance music and in the UK culture that we're in, um, it, for me personally, it comes from a cross between early rave music, reggae and hip hop, um, but with a British twist on it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you always need someone to communicate and you always need, as you said, you need translators. So you, you've always needed them people. Some, some aren't into it, some are into it. There are styles of music where it works, there are styles where it doesn't work. But actually, um, when you have the right people in their positions, it can be the tipping moment to any audience or crowd or atmosphere. And you can be the one that really makes sure the cooking pot explodes mm -hmm. and everyone gets that euphoric joy from the scenery and the places that we are in and the places that we get to locate and do these things. Mm. It's mad how like, like myself, I've played sets before or I've seen other people play sets before or my peers play sets before and the difference when they have an MC to the, when they don't have an MC, the energy in the crowd is so different, so different. Well, because for, for, for the selectors and for all the DJs, um, you, like you are doing a job and you have to concentrate on your job and your job isn't completely always looking up and out at the audience. You have to, you know, I mean, amazing for all the people that can do it with their eyes closed and don't have to look anywhere and know exactly what they're doing and can keep their eyes on the audience. I mean, that is a skill in itself. But actually, like, you know, if you've, most people don't realise that um, the travel, the extent of what goes, of what people have to go through to be on stage. So everything that's happened before you're on stage and you've lived all of that life mm. up to being on stage and then all of a sudden you're on stage and you've got to work and you've got to entertain. And you know, like for those that, that, that don't look up or concentrate enough on the audience, like, you know, with life and everything, that's where people like us come in and we just give them that extra boost. We are the eyes, we are the, we are the extra eyes, we are the extra ears, we are the voices. Mm -hmm. And how are you, as Inja, when you're emceeing, how do you approach things differently? Like, what is it about you that makes you you as an emcee? Um, I think one of the things that makes me me is um, I like, I try to make every set original for everyone. 
So, you know, lots of people like, you know, let's go back through the through like the databases of our brains. So lots of people that, that do this job, they have they have lots of lyrics, they have bars, they'll have uh, potential songs in their head that they know they can structure and put over any music at any time. And, you know, lots of these things people will be able to sing along to instantly. And, you, you know, there are there are hooks from some of the most famous MCs that everyone knows, the people that have no idea about this culture even know, but because, because the words have translated and gone so far. But for me personally, I like to, um, I like to freestyle a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, so one of the things that makes it even more personal is when you can turn around and let everybody realize that this moment has been and is being created for them here right now and it will not be duplicated because it mm. can't be mm -hmm. because to have the exact same moment you'd have to have exactly everything in the same place mm -hmm. and we all know that it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And as much as you are a master of freestyling you are a writer as well and you yeah. are a writer predominantly. Yeah. What is the creative process of writing like for you specifically? Wow, the creative um, process of writing for me is um, it's a very it's, it's, it's a very different aspect because it all depends. If I'm if I'm writing to music and I'm writing songs, I, I can only write them to music. Like there are lots of people that I know that can come up with melodies in their heads without any music and they can essentially write choruses and hooks and everything with no music and then they can manipulate that towards music. For me personally, I can't write songs without the music. So producers have been upset with me before because they'll send me a beat and they'll be like, why haven't you listened to it yet? And I'm like, I can't listen to it until I've got the space to sit down and potentially write and record to it. Because as soon as I press play, my brain starts ticking and pretty much every song that anyone's ever heard from me has come from me sitting down, pressing play, and my brain going, ching, and within half an hour, I've got a song written, and within an hour and a half, the producers have got vocals back in there. Computer. Wicked. So it's just on the first take you're saying, well not the first, first take but the first play of something you received, mm. that's the moment of spark for you yeah, yeah. every single time? Pretty much, yeah. Wicked. I refuse to listen to stuff without being in, the, being in my comfort surrounding of writing mm -hmm. if someone wants me to write to it. And I've had lots of people be really pissed off with me. You need to listen to it. I need to know if you like it or not. No, I can't answer that question because I need to be... You'll know if I like it or not because you'll have a song back in two hours after I've listened to it. Let's talk about the current pause that we're going through at the moment. Because it's been a hell of a pause. Everybody's been on pause, especially in the music industry, especially for everybody who works in nightlife, where, whether you're a, a creator or whether you're a performer from everyone in this whole spectrum. How has it been positive for you? What's come out of this pause that you can say, you know what, if I didn't have that time or I didn't have this pause, then this wouldn't have happened? For me personally, the pause has helped with a lot of self-reflection and has given me time to actually catch up on some rest because I hadn't had that. I haven't had this much time off since I was at school. Um, so it's for, for that aspect. It's been it's Since been lovely. Since you were at school, I don't okay. do holidays. Really? No. Um, I like to. I like. I don't mind. I, I say that I went on one holiday before the lockdown, and that was the first proper holiday that I've been on in ten over ten years. Um, because I like working and I like doing what I do and with a lot of the stuff that we get to do, we get to go to all of these amazing places and I asked to stay an extra couple of days and you know, like, could be Sardinia, could be Croatia, could be New Zealand, could be Austria, do you know what I mean? <laughs> could be flipping Ibiza, <laughs> could be somewhere nice in Spain. Like, it's, it's like there's lots of places where there's beautiful weather, so for me, I, I, I also feel like a lot of my work is kind of a holiday because I enjoy it so much. Okay, nice. Um, but on the whole aspect of nightlife mm -hmm. that you asked about, for me, I think, I think that um, a night out is way bigger than just all of us involved in it. For me personally, a night out starts like if, if like you've spoken to the gang outside of the current pause and time out, like if you've spoken to the gang, right, yeah, we're going to go to this night. It starts off with getting tickets in advance and then the week of the actual thing, people are thinking, 
outfits, hairdressers. Like, man needs to go barbers, <laughs> yeah? Like, man, man's missed a barber for time. Don't even front on it. Look at me. Look at me, man. My mum's going to cuss me when she sees this. Not even sorry, mum. I'm sorry. Like, pups, I know you're cool, but mum's even like, what? You ain't cutting my hair, so come on. Um, but, you know, like, so, like, for me, a night out starts with going to the barbers. Once I've finished at the barbers, man feels fresh. They've got the baker ladies next door. Drop them a little pee for a nice little pasta or a ice bun or something and then flipping man's feeling fresh go go get like a nice t-shirt shirt or something maybe some fresh crepes and then from there it's like you meet up with the gang where are we going to meet oh yeah let's go to this bar slash restaurant so those that haven't eaten catch up on a little snack like do you know what I mean and then you've got like the taxis then you've got all the people that get all of the alcohol and all the consumables to the place that we're all going to go to let alone the people that have been building the stages lighting, sound, designing the actual sets that we get to go on. Mm -hmm. And that goes back weeks, let alone the agents, promoters that have been liaising for months mm -hmm. before the night out to then, because you can't just click your fingers and have a night out. Mm -hmm. Like, so there's all of them aspects, let alone for ladies, you know what I mean? You might be like, well, boy, I want to go out to this thing, but I want to get a little colour added to my hair so it matches the things that I'm going to be wearing. Do you know what I mean? Could be like, yo, gal, them need to go gym in the week because they want to make sure the bunda's looking extra tight. <laughs> Man, they want to get the chest extra flexy. But it's like, but all of these things, like, they all add up to a night out. Mm -hmm. And they're all little rituals that we all have that we've all missed out on. So like, yes, there is for the, for us, for us creatives, you know, I can only speak from a creative's perspective, but all of these aspects are part of my personal rituals in going out. And I know I'm not the only one because the barbers is always ram come weekend. <laughs> like you women have to book in early if you want to get your hair done. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like you might be like, boy, there's a new lip gloss a while away. I can make them look nice and pretty for the weekend. And you're like, yeah, Riri's just released the next thing. Like gotta go cop. Do you know not what I mean? I've got the Fenty gloss bomb on today. Oh, <laughs> touch on, no, we can't virtual. Oh, Jesus, we see you sitting there. You're see it there like but like but like <laughs> like to the like it's all fun and jokes for us to talk about it like this but mm -hmm. actually it's real yeah and and all of these rituals like down to the people that drive around the country delivering all the alcohol and all the bottles of waters and all the all the soft drinks and all the rest of it you know you have we have people that come together collectively from all sorts of forms of life and it's all been paused Mm -hmm. Like, so that's, that's actually a massive community. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you consider, like, the actual community that is a part of a night out, whether they partake in the night out or not isn't the question. They are actually a part of the experience of a night out. Yeah, it's impacted a huge part of the community and a huge part of the industry and a huge mm -hmm. part of the world. Yeah. A huge part of the world. Let's talk about your new album which is coming out later on this year. We've just had a sneak preview of it earlier. Mm. We've heard your eight-year-old daughter on backing vocals. She was eight at the time. She's, she's still eight. eight. At the time. No, she's not eight So that anymore. was before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard some really beautiful stuff today and it's made mm -hmm. us even more excited to, to, to have it out in the world. Thank you. How did you manage the creative process recently when you were wrapping this album up? Because obviously you can't be in, in, in the same space as people now. You haven't been able to road test it. How has it been handling that remotely? Um, well, the, the remote factor is I'm quite a recluse anyway, so it's not often that I that I am comfortable enough to go and work with people. I generally like to like to work on my own when it comes to recording and stuff. But with um, with this project that's been produced by Whiny, um, he, is, he is one of my good friends. We've been working with each other for a long time. So we kind of really have a feel for how each other works. So for us two, the actual distance wasn't um, that, that it, it wasn't that detrimental to the creative experience, but what was was the fact that we didn't get to road test it. Normally, he'd go off somewhere, I'd be off somewhere. How did they feel about it? Yeah, these that were into it. How was this side of the world about it? Yeah, this side's into it. Oh, actually, now we need to sort out this tiny little bit here. Like it didn't, it didn't pump through, or it didn't cut like some of the other stuff. You know, that that was definitely something that I felt more. But the creative side of things, um, I'm I'm on vibes as soon as I wake up. So I'm I'm like I'm. It's probably why I 
keep myself as a bit of a recluse because I know I can do people's heads in because as soon as I wake up I'm on game like and it's not even it's not even funny as a kid I was told not to speak to anyone for at least half an hour or an hour because because I'd just piss everyone off but it's like when you're a ginormous ball of energy in a really tiny package like what else can you do like like do you know what I mean like that's how it is Okay, so it hasn't been that un- hasn't felt that unnatural for you in the creative creative process because you would have been producing and writing remotely anyway, and not yeah. around so many people anyway. Yeah. But where it has impacted is, um, I take a lot of um, I take a lot of detail from experiencing life and living life and just being free to travel and just free to do what we like and go where we like. Mm -hmm. That has been personally where the real impact has been because that is where a lot of inspiration comes from. Might have just popped into a coffee shop for a coffee and someone, someone, I've seen something or heard something or, you know, I've eavesdropped on something I shouldn't be eavesdropping in and I'm like, oh my Mm. God, that's a hook right there, you know. (laughs) Man's gone with that one. But it's like, you know, like, so all of these things that, that like, exist around us for me as a writer that is that is the food that like that, that nourishes me to produce so on that aspect that's where it's been difficult okay and it's coming out in hospital yes hospital is an independent label uh, what do you think the benefits of hospital being independent are versus like say the A&R process of a different major what are the what, what, what contrasts I mean, um, A and R processes are something that make me a bit uncomfortable anyway. But um, being on an independent label and and having the trust of them, knowing that I'm capable of doing what I can do, um, they kind of leave me to it. And and for this album, I kind of even asked extra. I was like, just leave me to it. When it's done, I'll come and find you. Um, but for for um, A&Rs with big labels, it's like, for me, I find that really off-putting in the creative process because um, you make a song, you get a vibe, you send it to someone, they then, they then break the song down, completely criticise it, and they're like, no, we want this changed, or we want this added, rah, 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 and that actually stifles the creativity in the first place. Mm-hmm. All of the reasons why people are signed, whether it's to majors or independents, is because someone has seen something in them that they've done. Mm-hmm. Now, when you, get, when you get into the major fields and all of that, yes, they signed you for that reason, but then they manipulate you and they move you to how they want to move you, which for me would stifle and kill productivity because that takes away from the creative process yeah for sure and then how does that how does that compare to when you're at an independent you're saying it stifles your creativity as from an a and r from a major Mm. but from an independent labels perspective what are the positives um the positives are um they let me roam free (laughs) and they let me create like that's the positives the positives is like if you put restrictions on anyone that's trying to create it's like uh, what's his name? Dude that painted the ceiling. Mikey, Michael Angelo. Angelo, yeah? that's the yeah. one. <laughs> if you'd have flipping Mikey Angie, yeah? listen, yeah, if they'd have turned around to Mikey and gone, right, Mikey, what we're going to do is, which eye is your best eye? Your left eye. Right, we're covering your left eye and we're going to put one hand behind your back. Now paint the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Okay. That ain't going to work too well because mm-hmm. Mikey can't balance. And Mikey's got to then relearn how to balance first before he can then pick up the brush and get to the ceiling. Like, whereas if you create and you're just left free to create, it means that, oh my God, yeah, all right, you might go outside the margins, you might go outside the frame or the box, but that can all still be contained mm-hmm. in the final process. But actual, the actual stifling of creativity is something that I'm very much against. Mm-hmm. And with all that in mind, what would your advice be to new and young artists who are considering approaching labels and managers or are being approached by labels and managers, maybe from majors, maybe from independents, but what advice would you give them before they have that experience or the hindsight? The first bit of advice I would give to anyone is don't share or do anything until you completely 100% and more believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, trying to get people to believe in you is a failing mission. If you believe in yourself so much that you don't actually care what anyone else thinks, 
By the time you get to the point where you don't care and people can see that and they might, some might be like, oh my God, that person's really cocky, like they're not taking my advice, whatever. Once you get to that point where you're that happy with what you do, all of a sudden people will come knocking. So my only advice is believe in yourself mm -hmm. to the point where if you believe in yourself, other people will believe in you. If you don't 100% believe in yourself, you are, you are easily manipulated. Say if somebody was having a hard time believing in themselves, what would your advice be then? Um, I've, I mean, I've spoken to, I've, I've, I've had friends that have been in this scenario, you know, and, and like, you know, one of my friends, he was like, oh, the people that I'm with, they're, they're not really listening to what I'm doing and they're not, they're not, um, they're wanting me to do more and more. And I'm like, how many songs have you supplied? And they're like, I've supplied loads. And I'm like, are you playing or performing these things out? No, I'm not. Well, that's your first mistake, bro. Okay. Like, back yourself. Yeah, back yourself first and then start finding like people outside of labels, just people that are into music that you that you either aspire to be like or you just enjoy what they do and then see if they like it. Because if, if you back yourself and people see you, for example, you're a DJ producer, you make your own tune, you're trying to get it signed to a label, you're sending it to all the labels, none of the labels are biting, but you're getting DJ sets and you're not playing it in the set. That's the problem. Like, if as soon as you start playing it in the set and you know you're making something and you can feel it in your heart, you're like, the people, I know the people are gonna be in this. Mm. And you're not playing it yourself. That's the first self-doubt. As soon as you start playing it yourself and you, and you have your audience and people then actually start to hear it, they'll all start like taking video clips, all the rest of it. And then people will be like, what's that song? Only this guy's got this song. What is that song? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you're building up your own hype. Mm -hmm. And just through that, like, that's how I, I'm, I mean, for me personally, that's how I've worked with loads of stuff. One of my, one of my songs that has been, that, that was accepted in, a, in, in quite a large way, like, the producer wasn't that into it when I made it. I really liked it. And I was like, he was like, no, nah, I'm not into it. I was like, okay, cool, no problem. He only gave me a demo with no sub in it. Yeah, I took that demo, I played it for six months across every single live show that I played with no sub. Mm. Every time it dropped, it got pulled up to the point where everyone would ask, what is that song? I said, oh, you have to in inbox this producer because it's, it's going to be with him, but I doubt it's ever going to come out. So then my his man, inbox was full. My <laughs> man got so many inboxes that man <laughs> rung me and he's like, yo, what's this? is this thing about the thing that come out? I'm like, no, you know that one you're not into? He was like, raw for <laughs> real. I was like, bruv, you better finish that, you know? Man finished it off, went number one. Like, oh, because I believed in myself. But if you don't believe in yourself, mm -hmm. no one else will. That's very good advice. Even, even if you fall down, like even if you fail, like you still have to keep on believing because you might not have had, you know, if you want an instant reload on something, that's not why I make music. But if you want that reaction, then you better prepare to not get that reaction for a long time. And then when it does come, you'll enjoy it and you'll feel it and it will be real. Mm -hmm. It won't be, there'll be no fakeness around it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the hustle as well. I feel like that goes hand in hand with what we were just talking about. Hey. The hustle has changed in that the days of selling music by hand are pretty much over. Of pressing music, people are still pressing, but it's not in the same way anymore. Mm -hmm. Selling music by hand kind of doesn't exist anymore. How has that affected the hustle for sales? And do you think that platforms like Bandcamp, online music discovery services like that should be a focus for new artists so that they can take control of the sales and generate their own income? 100% agree with you. Like mm -hmm. people like Bandcamp are amazing, and what they, the service that they provide, yes, pressing music can actually still be um, very valuable to a business and to your own personal business, but you can't press music if you don't have the audience for it. If you think like, you know, if you've just got spare change kicking around and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna press something, but you haven't got the audience to take it, then you're just gonna end up sitting on something. That's a bad hustle. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's a bad hustle. You ain't hustling nothing. <laughs> like, like you gotta buy back your own stuff. Like that don't work. Like you, you know, first of all, I think the main thing is to 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 find an audience and and to build that. And places like Bandcamp are brilliant for that. They really are brilliant. And if you you know, I've had friends that have that have never had anything out. And you know, I've helped them with projects and we put it on Bandcamp for them. They were top five for weeks. 
because places like Bandcamp are an open field. There is no, um, oh, what's the word? There is no discrimination in, in Bandcamp. It is just music. You want to find some music, you can find whatever music you want. It's there somewhere. You look hard enough, you'll find something that, that floats your boat, that is your flavor, that is the cherry on the ice cream with the whipped cream and the sprinkles. You, it's all there. <laughs> I love Bandcamp, it's the best. <laughs> it's, it's, well, do, you, do you know what I mean though? But it is brilliant mm. and, it, and, and it works and it's empowering and it, and it goes back to the whole believing in yourself. If your ambition is to get on a big major record label, then first of all, you've got to hustle yourself and you've got to pimp yourself so hard that major labels are going to see you to even start sniffing. Like, if you just want to have a career in music and you want to build a lifelong career in music, then you have to then still believe in yourself to be able to do that. Like, yeah. Have you ever considered being a life coach, Inja? <laughs> I get asked this a lot. It's motivational. I'm feeling motivated. I'm feeling inspired by our conversation. I think, I think you're missing the trick there. I, I do get asked a lot. It's time. <laughs> it's time, man. I don't have enough time for that yeah. yet. I'll tell you what, yeah. Maybe in the next life. No, 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 no. No, not even in the next <laughs> life, yeah. When it comes to, like, when man gets proper, proper grey, yeah, you get me in the polo neck with the sharp suits, do you know what I mean? And then, yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'll be, I'll be about it, Blue like. Kid. But until then, like, you know what I mean? Man's got, man's got some living to do. Still. <laughs> I'll be your first customer. You got, <laughs> you got some income coming from me when you're old and great. Thank you. Let's talk about gaming and VR. Mm. Virtual reality has been a huge thing over this pause that we've been going through and people have really adapted through the virtual world. Music and gaming have been going hand in hand even more so than they already were. How have you found streaming life during this time? Is it something that you've been doing a lot? Um, well, I started off, um, uh, I think I must have done it for maybe April or May last year. I started off doing my own Inja Sunday service um, because I was just like, you know, I, I missed performing and it was nice. And I also thought because, because I don't get the opportunity to actually just sing all of the songs that I've written and been a part of, I was like, why don't I use my Sunday service to actually just sing all of the songs? Like, you know, and man, man, man done weeks and weeks. I've got a lot of songs. <laughs> um, but like, um, uh, the streaming from home, it was cool. Um, I don't mind going and joining some, some live streams as long as they're live. I, I'm not really that into the pre-records. The live ones are cool. They still don't give me the euphoric feeling of performing, but it's something that's relatively close, which is nice. Um, I think the way music and gaming goes hand in hand, mm. like it's, it's, it's an age old match. Them two been married for a hot minute mm -hmm. and they're a good couple. <laughs> like they're, they're a nice couple, man. And if you can get that couple back in you, then you're all right. Like yeah. <laughs> that's a good couple to, to get on side <laughs> with, not fronting, like, <laughs> like, you know, but to actually like get that, um, uh, like what I love about it is gaming is seen essentially as something that younger people do, like kids with computer games. But actually, what, what, what we've now found out, like what we already knew, but lots of people didn't realise, and now what we've found out over this pause is that actually gaming is something that goes from the tiniest to the biggest and oldest, because I've got a gang that are like, boy, my grandma's mashing me up on whatever, whatever game. Like, and it's not like, you know, the shoot 'em ups and all that. There's, there's more than just that in the game. We all know that. Yeah. There's, there's enough games to cross the platform for everyone, especially as we've all had to be distance in this pause uh, that, that have put us together in spaces where we can laugh, we can joke. Do you know what I mean? Like my kid, she plays chess like against her mum when she's with me and she's like, yeah, I just bust a move on mum. I was like, when is she gonna, <laughs> when is she gonna play back? Oh, well, when she next picks up the phone, I'm like, boy, I can't cope with that. I'll dead them off now. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? But then that's just, that's just me. Yeah. Um, but, but like music and game and go hand in hand it's brilliant um, and yeah I think I think it's just shown people even more and with now how it is I've seen it as a way that lots of my friends communicate I don't really do it because I'm like they never let me play the games in the first place because I was always rubbish and I'd lose all their lives so I just used to sit back in the corner and write <laughs> while they're I'd sit back writing bars and raps and songs or whatever while they're playing games and yeah mm. Other than the live aspect of streaming, just to take it back to what we were talking about before, what else can someone do as a DJ or as a producer or even someone like yourself who wants to perform their own music? 
what can they do to make it as exciting as it could could possibly be and try and get that euphoria you were talking about as, that, that you experience in a live show? What else can they do other than just making it live? Like, what are the tricks? I mean, first of all, you'd have to, you know, you I'd have to think about setting. Like, yeah, right, could be your living room or your bedroom, but that's your stage. Make your stage, man. Like, make your if that's if that's the image, that if, if that's the view, like, well, how it works. If that's the view that you're putting out onto the world. Make your stage. So when you like are seeing your reflection back while it's happening, it makes you smile and makes you happy because you're like, yeah, actually, mm. might be my room, but my room looks sick. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so I think your stage is something that that you should definitely um, always try to look at and and then from there um, just communication I think communicating with your audience because you never know what's going to come up in the st in the links and you never know what anyone's going to say mm -hmm. and and like that aspect right there I think is one of the most fun parts mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more with both of those things I think they're so important mm -hmm. both of those things are you looking forward to being part of the VR show yeah. 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 Are you yeah, excited? Yeah. Well, I've never done it, so so like yeah, so I am. Yeah. Wicked. It's going to be very interesting. It's like yeah, yeah. I haven't got the goggles or nothing like that. <laughs> like so like, but I'll be a part of it. Come watch so. me through them. I'd love to have the goggles and go through everything. Do you know what I'm That'd saying? Be amazing. I hear about all these things and I'm like yeah yeah yeah. I'm in there. I ain't seen them, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be in there. Yeah. You'll see me. Come watch me now. <laughs> Inja, thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you today, it's been a pleasure meeting you today, and it's been a pleasure hearing all your wise words and advice that you've got for everybody watching and listening. It's been Take Note TV, I'm Emerald, thank you Inja, and see you next time. Yeah. Stay alert. Good and evil of fighting, so know your worth. Stay alert. Choose your side, stand firm, hold your turf.